going to hit record. All right. Great. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. We are from College of the Albemarle, and we wanted to share a little bit of information with um, our community partners about some of the programming that we do at College of the Albemarle and some of the ways that we're able to work with and help connect to the businesses um, here in Curzon County as well as our surrounding counties. So just a little bit of information about College of the Albemarle. Our purpose is transformation, to make a difference in your life while continuing to evolve as educators. We do serve seven counties here in our Northeastern North Carolina region. And in the last academic year, we served over 9,000 students between our curriculum courses, our career and college readiness, and our continuing education offerings. We are very excited and we'll share a little bit more about this later, but we are celebrating our 60th anniversary this coming year. So we were the first comprehensive community college here in the state of North Carolina. And we've been able to um, serve our communities and our students for 60 years now. We do have four campuses. And so we just wanted to give kind of a high level overview of some of the um, programs that we offer at the specific class campuses to give you an idea of some of the educational opportunities that students can receive. So this is our Edenton Show on campus. Um, kind of our two programs of study to highlight on this campus are our HVAC technology and our culinary arts program. We also offer a number of continuing education classes. We have a commercial truck driving class, a CDL class that is new this fall. We're really excited about that. Um, we also offer some um, nurse aid, phlebotomy, medical aid, and beekeeping classes out at our Edenton Show on campus. We also have our DARE campus, which we are excited. We'll show you later. We are adding some new spaces down to the DARE campus, a new building. But um, some of the programs to highlight at our DARE campus is we do our professional craft jewelry classes. We also offer welding and HVAC at the DARE campus. And then we have a wide variety of continuing education opportunities. So forklift operator, pool and spa certifications, notary, hospitality, um, drone, photography, marine diesel. We also do welding and HVAC through continuing education down there and some of our health science programs through like nurse aid and medical aid. Our largest campus is here in Elizabeth City um, and it is where the bulk of our curriculum programs are held, and then we also offer some continuing education opportunities here as well. So in the Elizabeth City campus, we offer the majority of our health science and wellness classes. We also have um, our welding lab, cosmetology, basic law enforcement training. Um, our business and IT classes are housed here, but many of those are offered online. And then we also have an agribusiness technology program here. Some of the continuing education offerings we have specific to the Elizabeth City area is um, some notary, cardiovascular, farm tech, a number of those health science and wellness classes. We also offer manicuring, ceramics, painting, um, EMS, and an effective teacher training class. And then um, the campus that's closest to our career tech partners is our career tech campus. And so this is over in the Barco area near the YMCA over there. And some of our flagship programs at this campus are our aviation technology, CAD, and machining. And then we also offer a number of continuing education classes um, in machining, forklift, drone, aviation, OSHA, and EMS. So for all of these four campuses, we do offer college transfer and general education classes as well. So students can work towards their Associate of Arts at all four of our campuses. A number of our campuses, they can also work towards that Associate of Science, Engineering. And then we do Fine Arts and Theater Arts, mostly here in the Elizabeth City. So this gives you an idea of kind of the wide variety of programs that we offer. We have over 70 different credential programs at COA in a number of different areas to try to help not only serve the students who are coming here, but to also serve our community in terms of the needs of the community and areas. So some of the ways that we can work with and help our businesses. So we offer a number of continuing education classes to help expand learning for professional purposes. So this includes some that we mentioned, but also we offer additional classes in um, computer training and QuickBooks and things like that. We can provide personalized trainings for businesses and Michelle Waters, um, our Dean um, for the Business Industry and Applied Technologies program as well as our Curatech Campus Administrator, we'll talk more on that in a little bit. 
We prepare our students to enter the workforce both upon completion of their program as well as through internships. So as businesses in the area, if you have a need for employees or if you have a need for interns, we definitely would love to work with you and find ways that students within our programs who are ready for that next step can connect to you. And we also offer a small business center here in Elizabeth City that helps the communities throughout the area. And so I'm gonna turn it over to um, Ginger and Rachel who oversee our small business center to tell you a little bit more about all of the opportunities that they can offer. Thank you, Megan. And for those listening, I apologize. I'm having technical difficulties with my video camera. So the Small Business Center is a state-funded organization. Um, as you can see there on the slide, what makes us a little different is that our funding secured from the General Assembly is a little bit of a it's handled a little bit differently in that we control our own budget. So the Small Business Center is funded with a director, normally either a part-time or full-time administrative assistant or coordinator. And the monies that we receive are based on the economic impact that we make throughout our seven county service area. So that impact is how many businesses did we help start or help to retain, how many employees, were hired or how many were we able to help retain and then along with um, any capital formation that goes into the business. So that that serves as our funding criteria and enables us to continue each year to offer um, the free one-on-one -on -one confidential counseling as well as over um, 125 free small business seminars a year. Um, and of course, due to the pandemic, those have all had to go virtual for the present time. So we are, you know, we also serve as a resource and referral service, as you can see there on the slide. Um, we have connections with all of our partners in the seven county service area from economic developers to our tourism authorities to our chamber of commerces. So we get a lot of our clients referred to us from those individuals as well as we refer back based on what their small business need may be. I did want to talk uh, briefly about our program that has been funded by the federal government. So the federal government reached out and offered community colleges across the 58 county service area federal monies to help boost their curriculum during the pandemic. Um, as a result of that, some of those monies were able to be secured by the small business centers. And those funds are used for what we're calling um, special counseling needs. So it, this is our reboot, recover, and rebuild program for small businesses. And it is used um, to assist businesses that of course experienced a downturn during the pandemic or tried to get started during the pandemic and everything came to a halt. So we have been instrumental in not only spending out all of our dollars before the December deadline, but uh, recently just were able to secure some additional dollars um, to continue on to assist these clients. The look of that service is the small business will reach out. We hope with the Chamber's assistance, we have been um, successful so far in working with 60 businesses since June 1. Um, we're revamping again now and we'll reach out and hopefully meet that many, if not more, before our end of December deadline. So a business will reach out for assistance. We have them register in our secure database. We then send them an assessment form for them to choose what resources they feel would best serve their business. Many are taking advantage of having a website designed or redesigned or convert it to an e-commerce site. Uh, many are taking advantage of the social media services. So I have a list of professional consultants that are under a confidentiality agreement with the Small Business Center. So when a business owner comes to me, we sit down or Zoom meet or with their preferred method of meeting and we discuss what will help their business to get up and running and hopefully stay retained and opened. And then I will connect that business with that resource provider. In some instances, um, one business in particular 
uh, it was three resource providers. She needed a website designed, she needed a rebrochure design, and she needed assistance from a CPA. And we have CPAs, attorneys, web developers, um, and we'll add more as needed. Several, two graphic design companies. So the program has really been a lifesaver. We were actually able to start, um, if my numbers are right, I think about four new businesses in Dare County as a result of being able to reach out and work with them and, and get them up and, up and running with the use of these monies. Um, one new business so far in Elizabeth City, and then um, several that have been able to hire new employees. So it's a great program. Um, we hope that with everyone's marketing assistance that you'll help us reach you know, even more small businesses. So I'm gonna now turn it over to Rachel. Rachel is our training coordinator, whom you can see on the screen, um, that handles all of uh, reaching out to our consultants. And I will mention before I turn it over to Rachel that the consultants that we hire are professional consultants, many who travel outside of the country. So we are using professional consultants that speak in front of corporate America to the tune of probably 10, 15 to $20,000 a pop. These consultants, many of them got their start years and years and years ago as trainers for the Small Business Center, and they've been able to grow themselves exponentially. As a result of that, they stay in partnership with our small business centers across the state, and they offer us a rate that is very complimentary to what our budget can handle. So when people are tuning into these webinars, it's, it's not just someone that has honed their skills. It is someone that is a true professional in the, in the trade. And we've had, we have some excellent consultants. And Rachel has um, done a great job. We already have a pretty robust fall schedule and I'll let you speak to that. <laughs> Thank you, Ginger. Yes, we offer um, a wide variety of topics for our training. Our most popular is usually social media marketing. Usually small businesses can't afford to, luckily with um, the grant funding, we've been able to get some small businesses in our area, some great website designs. Um, but typically small businesses, especially when they're just starting out, their marketing has to be done on the social media platform because you can kind of set your own budget. You don't have to pay. Um, if you do paid ads, you don't have to spend as much as obviously website design or a bigger marketing project. So social media marketing is very important for small business owners. And we offer a lot of that, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We cover all the platforms. Um, we also have classes in financial planning, um, lending sources, record keeping, taxes. QuickBooks is a very popular class for that. We offer um, QuickBooks in the fall in the spring. We offer leadership training for small business owners and management, grant writing and budgeting. We had our grant writing class last night with, as Ginger was saying, we have great presenters and we have, I'm sure Ginger can talk more or can speak more um, about that, but Calvin Patterson is our grant writing facilitator and he's a very he's so knowledgeable he's great I must have listened to his class probably four times now and I still learn new stuff every time um, he's a professional grant seeker and writer so he's great how to form a nonprofit and government contracting is also very popular in our area as well go to the next slide okay and for some of our specific upcoming trainings, we have Create Your Business Marketing Plan and Budget. That's going to be a great class because I believe it's a four series, and we're going to do a live Q&A session after each class. So after participants are done completing that training, they'll actually have their own business marketing plan and budget for next year. Um, so they'll have something tangible to walk away with. Then we have newest changes to Instagram. Social media is always changing, and obviously small business owners are very busy. So we like to offer classes every fall and spring about the changes to each platform. So we'll have that on October 7th. Um, obviously, branding is very important when you're a small business owner as well. Especially now, you want to get your brand online. 
Um, so we're offering that October 12th. And then we're following up our newest changes to Instagram with the newest changes to Facebook class on October 14th. And we do have a website, www.ncsbc.net, which has all of our classes on it. We have a lot more. I believe we have close to 40 scheduled for the fall already. And then I always post them on Instagram. Um, and there is our handle down there. So if you want to check out our upcoming training, definitely check those out. All of the trainings are free. And right now they're all webinars. Um, due to COVID, hopefully in the spring, we might be able to do a few more in person. But I will say I attend and participate in all the webinars, and they're extremely interactive and extremely very um, hands-on still as webinars. We did some polls last night, so we're making sure that they're still just as engaging as webinars as they are in person. And then also the other half of my job is customized training. That is... Um, a training for mainly manufacturing companies in our area, and we focus on the well-being of job growth, technology investment, and product, productivity enhancement. So what we can do is write projects with local manufacturing companies. Um, if they are adding new employees, if they get a new machine and they need training on it, or if they need to enhance their productivity, we can write a training project. It can be up to three years. It's a very, the best thing about the customized training program is it's very flexible. So we understand that sometimes manufacturers write these training projects with us and they get very busy. So we can extend a project, we can shorten it. They make it very flexible for us. Um, and there's many benefits to the customized training program. We can tailor it to the company's needs and timeline. And we can train new hires or we can train existing employees. And it's typically provided at no cost because we are also funded by the state. I will say since I've been in the position, we've only not covered the full cost on one training because it was very expensive, but we are able to cost share with companies as well to get the cost down for them. But typically we use regional trainers provided by the customized training program from the state and we use COA instructors so we can get that cost down for training and it, we're able to cover the whole cost typically. Um, and it can be done at the business we're working with or it can be done on our four campuses. So we're gonna be doing an upcoming um, course of training for a company that is outside. So we'll be working at one of our four campuses for the learning part and then they'll be going back to their place of business to do the forklift training. So we really, tailor around the company's needs. That's the most um, important thing that we focus on. And some examples of training that we've done through the customized training program is we've done OSHA training, forklift safety, crane operating training, um, Lean Six Sigma, effective communication, on the job training, we've done pre-hire training on specific skills, electrical safety, hazard communication. And we do have a great program that I believe has been converted all online now for food safety training. So that's exciting. Thank you, Rachel and Ginger. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Michelle Waters to tell you a little bit more about some events we have that we partner with local businesses for. Um, this is also geared towards um, advanced manufacturing, but um, this year we are happy to celebrate our seventh annual advanced manufacturing event. This event is normally housed at our Curry Tuck campus. Um, with COVID, we are moving our event to a virtual event but we're using it as an opportunity to actually expand what we're doing. So Friday, October 2nd, which is the National Advanced Manufacturing Day, we are still going to offer in-person tours and we're going to do this at all four of our campus locations um, so that students and family and community members can take advantage to see programs offered related to advanced manufacturing, careers and programs at any of our campuses. We are asking that uh, students or interested participants uh, RSVP and sign up at our website, www.albemarle.edu slash ADMAN. It's at the bottom of that flyer. 
And then on Wednesday, October 21st, we're going to offer virtual program information sessions. We're going to have one per program for HVAC, machining, computer-aided drafting and design, information technology, which will focus on our computer programs here at the college, one for welding and one for aviation. And then one that will provide students just general COA admissions facts and talk a little bit more about our college to career signing day. Um, our signing day, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a, a minute, allows students the opportunity to get scholarships for the upcoming year for entering in one of these career and technical education programs. So we're really asking for businesses to, if you want to learn more about one of these programs, you are welcome to either take a tour. You can also contact myself or Megan at any time to come and tour one of our campuses if you want to learn more about our programs or just see our facilities. We are open. I think that's been a big question that we've been getting a lot. We are open for business. Um, and then, like I said, you can also attend the virtual events if you want to meet any of our um, current instructors, if you want to meet other businesses that partner with us or meet um, past graduates because we've asked that they also attend. Um, it's a way for us just to basically connect everyone from college to career, which is our main focus for this particular event. And then hopefully next year we can get back to our face-to-face -face event on the Curry Tuck campus. Um, and then, like I said, this event kicks off our marketing for our career, our college to career signing day. Um, this is something that we've now done for the last three years. This will be our fourth year doing this event. It's a signing day similar to athletic signings, but it's a way to celebrate students choices to go into a career and technical education program here at the college. These typically tend to feed directly into our local economy and jobs here. So it's one of those that, you know, students tend to come and go to COA, become educated here, and then stay and work in our local community. So it's very important to all of us. We do offer scholarships. This year, we will be awarding over um, up to $10,000 in scholarship funding to el eligible students who are going into specific career and technical uh, education programs next fall. So it's a great um, event. We will be doing it virtually again this year. We did it virtually last year. So it's um, kind of our kickoff to that. And we have really good success rate with these students. In fact, we're um, over 90% success that students who go to our signing do um, receive the scholarships are actually enrolled in COA programs. So it's a really, really good return on investment for students who um, attend this event. Thanks, Michelle. And we just wanted to share with you guys a couple things that are um, upcoming and exciting at COA. As I mentioned earlier, we are celebrating our 60th anniversary as a college. So we will be having a cheers to 60 years virtual celebration to kind of kick this off. This is upcoming on September, October 3rd from 6 to 7 p.m. There are some live auction items that have been donated by community um, members and sponsors here within our service area. We have a commemorative beer coming from the Weeping Radish Brewery over in the Currituck area. And then we also have a diamond that was donated by Creative Jewelers um, to kind of help us kick off this six year celebration um, the right way. So this is an opportunity for, it is open to all members of our community, current students, alumni, business partners, community members to come and help us celebrate. And if you wanna learn more about this, the website is www.albemaro.edu slash cheers. We also have two new buildings. Um, so many of you know that the Currituck Public Safety Center is being built over in the Barco area and COA is really excited to be able to partner with the County of Currituck to have a space within this building. And so this will allow us to do some additional training opportunities over in our Currituck campus. And Michelle, maybe you can touch on some of the programs that this new building will bring over to the Currituck area. Of course, um, some of the expansion that this building will allow um, COA to offer in the Curry Tuck area is basic law enforcement training, uh, certified nursing assistant or CNA training, as well as um, some expansion of some general education classroom um, there, as well as allowing us to expand some EMS training as well in that building. So we're super excited for the expansion 
in the county related to public safety. And we also down at our Dare County campus um, have a new building construction that's going to start on this building. I believe they're doing um, the demolition this next week. Is that right, Tim? Yes, Megan. As a matter of fact, it'll start the end of this week. Uh, all the equipment is being um, uh, brought into the campus as we speak, probably. Great. So this is another building that's going to give us the opportunity to really expand upon some of the programs that we're able to offer in the Dare County area as well, um, both in our curriculum side, as well as our continuing education side, as well as some of those customized trainings that Rachel and Ginger were talking about that we're able to offer in our different service areas. Um, and so it's a really exciting opportunity. And I believe the Caratech building, we're hoping to be up and running um, this time next year, give or take um, construction timelines. And I think the Dare building, we're hoping by fall of 2022, is that right? That's correct. Uh, 2022. It should be completed the uh, spring of 22 and probably move in uh, the summer of 22 and we'll be uh, uh, greeting off our students uh, fall of, uh, well, I guess be August, August 15th of 2022. So we are very excited about this. Um, we wanted to open this up and allow for any questions, but I also wanted to provide you with some contact information. Um, so this is the contact information for Michelle and myself, as well as Ginger and Rachel. If anything that we've talked about maybe um, triggered an interest and you wanted to reach out to learn more or you have some additional questions, feel free to contact any of us. Um, I serve as our director for admissions and recruitment, but I also work closely with um, the different aspects on campus. But if you have a student who might be interested in coming to COA, feel free to send them my way. Um, and then Ginger and Rachel run the Small Business Center and can answer questions about those. And then Michelle, as our Caritech Campus Administrator, can answer any questions about some of those customized trainings we've been able to do in that area as well. So any questions about um, some of the stuff we've talked about or any, any interest in um, what COA might be able to do for you? I just wanted to real quickly make a comment. Uh, um, that program that Ginger and Rachel are doing, I guess it's the R3 program, has just been fantastic. I know we've had some businesses uh, in Curry Talk and, and some of our members at the beach that have taken advantage of that. And that program has just been a huge success in my opinion. Um, the businesses are not only helped, but the, the graphic designers or the web designers or the CPAs are also local businesses. So really, you know, th there's multiplier effect on that on that program. So that's just been a fantastic program that's helped a lot of people in the pandemic. So I really appreciate y'all doing that. Thank you, Josh. If I could uh, ask Neil, Neil, I, I meet you the first time. I'm obviously the dean up here at the Dare campus in the Outer Banks. Uh, do you work um, a lot with the Virginia Beach uh, tourism as far as um, hospitality and tourism? Yeah, that's a um, that's a uh, an industry that we like. We want to do more, and we've done some in the past. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's something that um, we're it's it's on our radar, and we're focusing pretty heavily on it to get involved with it. Um, so yeah. Well, I just wanted to let you know, um, we started probably about three years ago at the college through uh, continuing education, work, work, work uh, force development, a hospitality leadership. Um, it's a 96 hour uh, con ed program that you can get a certi college certification in. And in the state of North Carolina, of course, uh, with our high school students with dual enrollment, if they take the program, they'll have a state certification in hospitality leadership. And with COVID-19 and the pandemic, um, we now put this program online. Uh, it's uh, all by Zoom and remote. And um, it's given us an opportunity to expand not only in the, all the counties here in the Northeast region, but um, also across the border there in Hampton Roads. So, if you if you'd like for us to talk about that to see how we can promote that um, for you know can be anybody you don't have to be a college student but you can take this 96 hour and that would give them a, a certification to get into the uh, tourism you know we, we have great partners here with uh, the Hilton um, the Sandlin Hotel Ramada Inns and also all the real estate companies that um, what they have agreed to is to do job shadowing and, you know, uh, internships and then uh, hire the students that have the COA uh, certificate at a higher pay rate. And then 
also an opportunity for advancement in the uh, industry. So if that's something you'd like to work with me on, I would really like to, you know, talk to you later off, um, you know, the, the webinar here. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm always open for that sort of thing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure like what, uh, like where, where I'd fit in with that, but yeah, I'm, I, I would, I would be uh, open to kind of like promoting it and kind of getting get it out there. Um, it's definitely something that uh, we're seeing a lot of people being hired on up here. Like Gold Key PHR, like they're like kind of the big one up here. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we're seeing a lot of people. They're doing hiring events. They're doing um, you know just more and more. Um, what's the word for it? Um, expansions at the hotels and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty interesting stuff. So. Well, if you know, if you can network with me uh, with other folks, that'd be great. Uh, just kind of like to, yeah. you know, help the industry not only here in the Northeast because we got quite a few people that come from Virginia to to work here too in the Outer cool. Banks. But it'd be kind of a, a good partnership. So thanks, Neil. Yeah. Any other questions about what CUA might be able to offer or about any of the information we presented? Great. Well, like I said, you have our contact information. Please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us if you do have questions, and we can't wait to um, work with all of you more. Thank you all so much. This was very informative. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Megan. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, guys. Right. Nice meeting you. Bye. Bye. Later. Bye.